Are we live? Yes, we are live. We're live. We are live. Um, if you guys can give us a thumbs up or a comment in the comments, uh, the people that are on, let, let us know that you can hear us loud and clear and everything is uh, streaming uh, well for us on this. What day of the week is it? Thursday? <laughs> um, Thursday, 23rd. Two days till Christmas. Thursday, 23rd. Two days till Christmas. Um, thank you guys for joining us. The, the coaches that are on today, uh, we've gone over, we've done this for two straight days. The first day we went over, uh, why the dribble drive kind of showed you the basics and the analytics of dribble drive. Uh, yesterday we dove, uh, deep into, uh, can you run it versus the zone, the adjustments you need to make and what other things we do. Some of the other things we do against zone, uh, those replays will be available inside the Dribble Drive Motion Hoop Talk group through Sunday evening and on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't had a chance to watch those, uh, you can go to System Basketball YouTube and see day one, day two. In the description, if you're on YouTube right now, the links to day one and day two are in there. Um, so for you that don't know who I am, I'm Mark Hart. I'm a high school basketball coach, owner of System Basketball been doing this uh, high school coaching for 26 years. I uh, coached boys for 25 years, went to the dribble drive in 2008 and have been running it and variations of it um, since then. And now I'm coaching assistant girls coach at Corona Roosevelt. Uh, Kurt, you want to let them know a little bit about you again, real quick. Sure. Kurt Gilsdorf. Um uh, currently at Clackamas Community College, associate women's coach there. Spent the previous years in high school in Oregon City and my alma mater, Gresham High School. Uh, and uh, been into the dribble drive since around 2005. Dabbled a little early and then uh, went full boat um, um, 2013 and, and have, have kind of just dove into it and done some video stuff with Mark and and kind of try, shared some of the things that we've learned over the years to try to make it better. So hopefully we'll share some ideas today that'll that'll make you a little bit better with your dribble driver, or maybe even just stir some thought uh, about what you're doing right now. Oh, uh, well, we got to advance. All this. this is all the stuff we went over for the two days. So that's Wednesday. All right. So today we're going to talk about dribble drive motion adjustments. Our goals for you today would be to give you ideas if you do not have the ideal dribble drive motion personnel. Uh, five, how to how to run this five out? Our recommendations on five out or four out or three out two in. What what our thoughts are and show you some three out two in alignments or how you can run it out of these alignments. So we get questions. I get questions. Can I run DDM if, and then it becomes, I have five guards. We're small. I don't have a post player. I don't have some players that can put the ball on the floor, this or that. Um, my opinion is yes, you can. Because if you've heard me before, I just described dribble drive as a series of organized penetrations. It, it's a, it's a way of playing that opens up the floor with spacing and all the players on the floor have some structure and idea of where everybody's going to dribble or where, where if they drive, I should say where they should move. Um, Kurt, you got anything on the, on, on this one? No, just, uh, I, I think we, especially high school guys out there that, that, that are just coaching their team and, and look at things and, and like the idea of, well, you know, dribble drive, but, but it might not fit yet. You might have two guys that can, that can really put it on the deck. Uh, I think this will be something you might be able to pull a couple ideas from where you maybe don't run it in a traditional sense, but you run it from either a different alignment or you, you get a little bit different spacing uh, to help you uh, maybe install some aspects of DDM or go full boat with just different, different personnel. All right. Okay, so the alignments, five out, three out, two in, four out, one in. And the game has become positionless. Um, not sure when Kurt did this one how old this picture is of Mr. Stevens at the bottom left corner where he says, I don't have 
the five positions anymore. It may be as simple as three positions now. You either a ball handler, a wing, or a big. Um, well, if you're running five out, it might be two positions. <laughs> ball handler and everybody else is a wing. Um, so it the game has changed. Um, for people that don't know who the picture is in the right-hand corner, Henry, is it per, per, I think it's per, Peretta, but... I'm, I might be wrong. Coretta, old, old, I think he's retired now, Villanova coach that did the five out, a numbering system, and kind of got it popular with some people back in the day on the five out. So, um, I know uh, I'll let Kurt talk about this because he's, he's going to bring up probably what, um, a little bit of what he talked about yesterday, why, uh, pros and cons of five out, but uh, Nick Nurse, um, he listened to Nick Nurse at a clinic and Nick Nurse had his opinion on five out. So I'll let Kurt start off here on five out. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think five out's a big trend right now. And, you know, some of the things that we've got listed there is, is the big one is, is lifting the big, getting the big out of the paint. And I think everybody at some level all the way from the highest to, to, to wherever has had that issue of, of a big being in the way when you've beat somebody off the bounce. So again, five out gives you that open area around the rim or at minimum, maybe the help's coming from the weak side and you're creating a, a long, long closeout or, or at least forcing a penetration. And again, the, the, the trend of the game toward more guard play, positionless, all those things in five out. And, and again, what we're trying to kind of illustrate today is just borrowing DDM concepts, applying DDM concepts to that alignment and if you look over on the con side with our red thumbs down over there you can see that that you may not always have the personnel already inside although you could argue that that boxing a player out from five out might be harder than boxing a player out that you're already in contact with so you know i always kind of tell guys that you can still get to the rim pretty effectively you know crashing through the elbows um, from the wing as well as you can from being inside um, and again, you, you may not have, you may be one of your top four or five players is your big and, and can't really play on the perimeter. And then, um, I've always thought this is the big one. I think that third one is, is a big one is when you play five out and you play essentially positionless, sometimes, you know, as we share the ball, your high school team may have three really good players and somehow four and five keep getting the ball over and over again when you uh, need it the most. And then the gap concept of dribble drive, you know, the idea with four out is bigger gaps. Those gaps shrink if you use traditional five out spacing. Yeah, my, I've been running, I ran the five out version of dribble drive, uh, traditional five out point, two wings, two corners. And then the year before last year went to more of a two slots, two corners and a stretch spacing that we'll go over here in a second. And now I'm back running the four out one in traditional. And I still, I still believe honestly, it, it functions better as the traditional four out one in uh, you have the, you have the paint uh, layup person threat and it just seems to flow a little bit more. You have to make tweaks a little bit with the five out and a three out two in. But so my, my thing is, is I still like the four out uh, one in a little bit better. Do you have a preference, Kurt? You know, I, I think for all of us, it's, it's so it should be, it should be anyway, four out uh, or excuse me, personnel driven. You know, we've, we've had at the college the last few years, we've had a, a fairly traditional big um, that, that would not function well. Although we do use chin, we do use uh, some of the razor stuff. We do use some of that stuff, some horns to lift them out on occasion, especially when we're playing a team that has, somebody that can clog the paint, but, but I do agree that, that four out and I'll go into that conversation with Nick nurse at, uh, at coaching you. And, and we, uh, I was watching that and, and I, I was able to grab him on the way by. And I asked the question, you know, how do we, how many different ways do you like to move the nail defender? Cause if you listen to NBA coaches, it, it's all about moving that nail defender. I, know I shouldn't say all about, but, but a big topic of conversation is always about moving the nail defender along with obviously all their ball screen stuff. And, and he was really caught by it, uh, that conversation. So we were able to dive into it and, and 
you know, he's kind of known a little bit for five out. And then we started talking about that four out versus five out. And his comment was, he's really gotten away from five out. And, and I kind of, you know, kind of dug a little deeper and he said, you know, just the spacing with five out was just, they never could quite get it right. What he felt. And so what he's gone with is when they play a bunch of guards, essentially five guards, he'll put anybody down in the dunk spot. He'll put Van Fleet down in the dunk spot and occasionally seal in. And so again, that that's a situation where really with five guards, he's still utilizing the four out. But again, I think five out is something that all of us can consider. And I would, I would certainly really recommend that you have a five out set in your playbook somewhere to take advantage of a strong drive, to get, to get a big guy out of the paint, maybe somebody in your conference. I know Mark last year had a seven foot tall guy that he asked questions yep. about how do we make that guy pay for just camping? You know, so I think, I think to not have at least one five out concept in your playbook, even if it's just an after time out, something um, would be neglecting a part of the game that you could take advantage of. Hey coach. Uh, thanks for tuning in there from, from Riga, La, La, Latvia. Awesome to see this. This is what's, what's cool. I mean, Kurt love to see this. We'd like to see how far this reaches and people that we've seen. Uh, this is our second three day type challenge that we've done and really enjoy uh, seeing where the coaches are from and tune, tuning in from and getting the information. Oh man, we got to give this a shout out. This is dedication right here. Indonesia, 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, got to love it, Coach Machdi. Uh, we got New Mexico. So we got we got people joining in in the house here. Um, awesome. Thank you guys for joining us on the third day. So let me hide that stuff. And let's get to the next. Okay, so we talked about a little bit about five out here. And traditional five out is point two wings, two corners. Now, numbers don't matter since it's positionless, but this is kind of how you would space. Now, um, the modern five out kind of goes hand in hand with the traditional four out, one in. But when I, when I do this, if we're in a half court set, we play two slots, two corners, and instead of the four being in the dunker spot, the post player, we've moved them to the stretch or the 45 and they can go on either side. So the spacing on this, by doing this, if you look at one and two, that's a single gap, one and three, that's a single gap. You still have a single gap, like a gap and a half, I would say between one and five, if you're stretched like that. And then between one and two, you've got the double gap. So they could still have their initial attack phase. So um, that is the five out spacing. If you're coming out of transition and they get even wider, five might be uh, at the top of the key and you're more like a two-sided break if you're running it out of, a, out of a transition. So the modern five out works pairs well with a two-sided break. That is popular nowadays. Now, Kurt, you want to talk about, I know you use this one, you use this a little bit more than I do. And then yeah, I have again, a clip from everybody. Yeah, th this kind of goes to um, a, an easy way that we used um, traditional numbered break uh, into five out, because I know a lot of folks probably out there, you know, you're, you're used to running twos, threes, and you're running your four down the middle of a rim run and get them out. This was a great way for us to uh, clear a big, uh, create a double gap with some wave action here. Um, I saw Mike do this, neighbors do it. And he, he's in running a lot of ball screens from this now where the four is just going to sprint up and ball screen. But they also ran, I called it the Razor series. And I borrowed a couple sets from him and even even went back to some of his Kelsey Plum days uh, with Osafor at the high post or the elbow. But here you're just going one to four and now you can reverse it to five. You can go up, down, which I believe the clip is going to be up, down. Um uh, some stuff I think I've posted before as far as some, some scripted plays, but pretty simple stuff, but pretty effective. Let's see. Is it going to play for me though? Let me remove it. Let me share. Hold on a second, guys. Hmm.
All right, here we go. That up there, Kurt? Yep, you're good. Okay, so see how they're really wide here? Um, they're really, really wide. And that's – and the team they're playing here might even be, like, zoning it up a little bit maybe. And we're going to flash the post to the top. And now what Kurt was saying, up, down. And that's that's good terminology, good stuff. So each each side of the floor is doing two different things here. The two side, which is the right side of the floor, is setting an up flare screen. And the left side of the floor, the, the five or the trailer guard, whatever you want to call them, is screening down. And now this player at the top is reading actions. This is one thing you can do out of this alignment. So they hit a flare for a jump shot. Now, if you watch teams play, they're switching that. That's a slip by the flare screener. If the flare isn't open, what it will turn into a lot of times is DHO actions. Flare into a dribble handoff, turn the corner and get your spacing. The four rolls back into the paint. You'll have lift action from behind, all that, all that good stuff. And uh, we talk about that is that is one action out of going from four out to five out, which if you're not playing, if you're if your player's already down the floor, that's simple wrinkles that you could do. I mean, you could just space it, ISO the player in the middle of the floor, just turn and turn and drive them and do lots of things out of a four out, just flashing your post. So if you have that undersized kid that wants to, that you want to get on the perimeter and you don't want to just start out and five out and it's just a package, like Kurt said, a razor series package that you put together with a couple of wrinkles, then you're not, then I would say my advice is if your top eight players or top nine players that you're going to play and you play two of them in the post, and you only play five out when you have one lineup, then I wouldn't run five out. I would I would maybe just put in a, a set here or there. Kurt, do you have any recommendations in that situation? No, again, you got to play to your personnel with, 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 you know, again, looking at your rotation, who's going to be in the lineup. If you're going to play two bigs, you probably need a third uh, to, to keep that. And so, you know, I think you're right on with that. And, and I know that we've we've had some good luck with some of the Razor stuff. And it's a very simple way to go from four out to five out. And I think you and I talked about it beforehand that maybe that flare screen turns into a handoff and now you're in dribble drive, five out dribble drive. And that kid just tries to turn the corner. So again, we're basing all of our ideas here in these different alignments with the, the idea that it flows right into our DDM actions. The same rules we talked about on day one and the same rules that you've probably seen from Mark and I, when we've done some of the other video clinics and stuff. Okay. So um, when I was running five out, um, it was a unique story for me when I started running it was I'm like, okay, like I said, you got to keep this simple and you know, and you, you don't want to screw up your players. Cause I, I screwed them up and I screwed myself up because we were running dribble drive. Then I said, okay, when we play five out, we're going to run five out read and react style. So, so if I, if I would have drove with my right hand, the, if the point guard drove here and read and react rules, five would go to the corner, two would cut through. Well, when we drove right, five was going there, but two's trying to kick up because that's what they were used to doing in normal dribble drive. So it confused them. So I, I kept the concepts of passing and cutting, but we went with, uh, kick up, kick up, uh, dribble drive penetration rules. So if they're dribbling and picking it up, you're going to come up. You're not going to go back door, and you're not going to fill that corner. So um, that's what we did. These are the different cuts that we would use to create gaps. So we used to use a term here when the ball went to the one to the five, we would give them like a one clap before we would fill like a normal, most teams would go four to the top of the key on that. We would give him like a one clap to see if he wanted to attack that double gap. Now 
in the middle of the lane. It's a really good time to drive when you basket cut there. If they're a team that follows and I, uh, Vance uses the term sniffers in defense where they're following them and their nose is near their butt and, and, and playing bad, don't see ball and man. So you can just drive right up that person because they can't see them and help. Uh, the second cut is a blur and that starts to create your like weaving action to start getting into a in downhill. Uh, I know Kurt's going to show three out, two in, which in a roundabout way, it is five out because you would just take your post players and put them in the short corner. So the five out traditional and the three out, two in are very closely aligned there. Um, this cut um, is a jet cut and something unique at a transition that I, I, I messed around with where we go here and now we just – cut across the nail so that gives five a big gap there to kind of attack downhill and maybe it's a blur action it's a ghost screen action whatever you want to whatever you want to do there against the pressing pressuring type teams um if they're sagging and stuff i would go a little lower and loop it out or even just cut to the other corner but that's a jet cut for us those are the, the those are the traditional cuts i would use to create gaps and flow into dribble drive. Um, what I'm, what I've gone more to of late is when we do run the five out is the modern with the post in the stretch spot. So the formations are two slots, two corners, one stretch. Uh, the rules that we, that I put in for that is if you pass to a corner, you cut opposite corner. If you pass slot to slot, they can finger cut or fan cut. A finger cut is a 45 degree cut to the opposite corner. And a fan is you're going from slot to same side corner or same side wing area ish. If we pass from slot to stretch, which is the 45 area of the floor, we drip, we drift to the opposite slot. Um, I know uh, people that follow um, Coach Cassio, um, he does any pass that goes down. He cuts opposite. I just found my player could not get to the opposite corner fast enough, and that helped defender clog the lane in that situation. Um, I know Doug Novak does it the way I just described, where slot, slot to strap, stretch, they just drift to the opposite slot. And what he would use some Princeton action in that in that situation a lot too, with like a drift. Think Princeton there. If you, for people that know Princeton, you might have your post elevated there, and they're going to drift off of that for a for like a, a flare Princeton cut. Um, if you pass up, so if you go corner to stretch, corner to slot, you're going to hold and space out. You're not going to cut. Um, if you push, if they fan you out of the corner. If, they, if we fan cut to the corners or you're pushed out of that corner, you're going to cut to the opposite corner or nail. Uh, not many people have seen the nail per, part of it. I don't know if I'll get to that today. But now when you're running this, and I've mixed this up with dribble drive too, and I'll let Kurt talk about that, this aspect too, what is I think we get too caught up in driving the drive. So like if a player drives – we drive again. And I know, I think, I think the top guys talk about this, like Doug Novak, they talk about up, up and over, or down, up, over concepts instead of drive, drive, drive. I think we get caught up sometimes in drive where a lot of the new thing is you, you go one more. You don't, you don't always attack off the drive. You catch it, you look for your shot. If not, you're going one more pass. Um, Kurt, you want to elaborate on 50-50 type of rules? Yeah, I know that the, the down up over is something that we emphasize, especially on a on a like your dribble drive gets a little funky and you kick it down. We want to move it back up and over, run a jet cut. And, and, it, and going back to that jet cut, I think, guys, when you think about that jet cut, um, the reason why it can win, you can run jet cut from wing, you can run it from a corner. And what it does, guys, is, is instead of a traditional cut, along the baseline to clear a player where that coach has probably taught it in shell drill a hundred times where a kid knows to stop on the midline, a jet cut. And again, you can use this in any style of offense. A jet cut can 
eliminate that help defender because for some reason they just follow a heck of a lot closer on a jet cut. So going back to the 50-50 rules that Mark had up there, sorry about that, Mark, but I just wanted to no worries. throw no that problem. out. I think jet cuts can be really effective from different spots on the floor. I wanted to make sure I shared that. But, you know, mixing it up, I, I, I think when you're going – you know, a pass one to five and, and you space and fan cut it, you cut through. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I think you as a coach, if you're a dribble drive coach and you're trying to figure out how to do it in a different way now because it doesn't fit, or maybe you're just thinking dribble drive and you're not sure how to do it. I think if you come up with a few simple things based on your dribble drive principles, principles you'll be in good shape. Um, and I like the different ways. I think it might have to be a call if you're in high school. I don't know if a kid can technically read it. Um uh, and I've, I've said this many times in clinics is, is we all love it to be reads. I would love to have old man basketball that I can put together five 40 year olds um, to go out and play because we all know how to play together, but we're too old and can't move. So we got to use the 16 year olds, but are, but that are much more athletic, but they don't necessarily have the, the savvy to read every screen to read every cut. So I think some simple rules there. And I like, I love the rule where we kick it down that we're going to go up and over and then play. And that's, that's something we utilize all the time because in dribble drive, traditional four out dribble drive, you're not technically trying to kick down very often. It's kick ups, kick backs, drops, those kind of things. Okay. So going back to some of the rules here, and if you want it, so you could see it here, there's your spacing. So if you're coming down and one cannot attack a gap and you throw if they throw it across, it's going to be a, they they have two options. They can fingers or the second one. Now for me, these are calls right now. Our girls can't. Now we're starting to get better at it, and our point guard's pretty good at this. Where if she decides that she wants to fan, she's yelling fan to the two player and telling her to cut. Because if you don't communicate there, you're going to have two people on that side and you've ruined the gap situation. So um, what I didn't show here and I should have is if five threw the ball to four, see how one threw it down and went. Most people's rules are always, if you throw it down, we call this five to four as a slot. So if five was run, if, if that was the case, five would have to get all the way to that corner. Five would have to get all the way to where two is. And I think if they're running, the player, I mean, if they're a decent defensive team, they're going to just stop right here in the gap. Now, if I throw it here and I go slot to slot, the five goes to the opposite slot and four drives and they're guarding that nail. Now that's going to be, a tough closeout for them. And now they're going to either cheat step it and drive it or shoot it or flow however they want. So our rule was, is corner pass or slot to slot. We're going to cut. We're going to, our, our default cut is the fingers cut. Our optional cut is, and that should be a pass guys. That shouldn't be a dribble. Sorry. Um, one to five, that should be a pass. And then one's here. And I'm going to show you a little bit more of fan and fingers and how it flows here in a little bit. Can't see it. Do you see it, Kurt? What's that? Do you see the diagram? Uh, modern five out cuts to create gaps. Yeah. Yep. It's Wayne, Mor there. Wayne Morgan yeah. saying he can't see. Maybe refresh, Coach. I don't know, Coach Morgan. Um, it's okay. And then the through cut is just your your basic corner cut of dribble drive. And now it just flows two bumps up to the stretch. Four is going to hold there. They're not going to come up and fill because you want to keep your double gap spacing. All right. So let me get to Luceo animations here real quick. I'm going to go through these fairly quick to show you today and give you ideas of how this, how this flows. Let's see. Where's my quick time? All right. I'll 
plug it in, it looks like. Here we go. My bad. Wasn't plugged in is why. All right. Okay. New movie recording. And let's... Give me one second more here, guys, and it's going to be up. <clears throat> All right. Is it? All right, but it's locked. It's not. Shoot. Well, technology is not working at the slick. So let's stop screen. Share it again. Might not be able to do it today. If you want, Mark, you can you can play around with that while I jump into the stuff later on in the the three out two in stuff while you're trying to get that refreshed. Yeah, why don't you go three out two in? Okay. Go over three out two in. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, back in the old days, and I don't want to say too old because I'm I'm getting up there, but but I we ran some. And we really didn't know what we were doing with it. It was more of dribble weave, and I was starting to get Vance Wahlberg in my blood a little bit and talking with him. And so we had a, a three out, two in alignment because at, at Oregon City, um, for quite a stretch of time, we had a, a I would say, 10 year stretch where we had, if not one, not two, one, but we had at least two Division I bigs. Uh, every year for about 15 straight years. It was an amazing run, maybe even going back 20 years there uh, with some of the Brad Smith teams that were winning national championships. So we we loved the concept of, of a dribble drive. We really didn't know what we were doing with it, but we played it three out, two in, and we're pretty successful. Again, a defensive have gotten better, but we, we used it a couple things. We used, obviously, with our two bigs on the floor that could play. Um, it's a great little alignment for late game. If you've got a shot clock, you can eat 10 or 12, 15 seconds on a shot clock and then get into your action. Um, you, you technically have bigger gaps if you really space it. Um, you know, the, the dilemma is, again, with pack line now, people get into those gaps a little bit more. Uh, and, again, you end up with a lot of one-way drives. But you can apply your regular dribble drive to three out, two in, and I'll kind of just run you through a couple little actions here. I'm going to go to the next slide there, Mark. Yep. There you go. Okay. And again, just, just dropping, we might drop the two or three a little bit deeper. You could have them on the wings extended, uh, the four and five in your short corners. Uh, and again, just attacking with uh, one, having a two-way drive to start, going either direction. It's a great little isolation. You could even drop two and three to the deep corners if you wanted to go four flat to start it. I know Mike Meek, when he was at Southridge High School before he moved on to George Fox and then University of Portland would, would run like what he called three guard. And he really dropped his two, three into those things. And, and again, three guard, meaning three guards in the action and the four and five reading the defense. If the defense helped too far up, you'd throw that bounce pass and go from there. Looks like you've got it there. So I'll just talk through the next no. one here. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll yeah. let you go through it. There, there's it again, the, the, the Kansas weave is what you'd seen probably most recently is when Bill Self had three really good guards. And, you know, he got away from the high-low a little bit at times during games. Um, they put those guys down the short corner, a lot of lob dunks when the defense helped up. Obviously, on the women's side, you're not getting a lot of those. But, but essentially, you had that weave action. And, you know, we always believe that if we had three really good guards – no matter how much you were switching or how much you were, you know, trying to get into our gaps, we were eventually going to beat you. And again, in a non-shot clock state in Oregon, you could do that and you continue to work it. You end up with some spacing where you get to some drive kicks, some open threes. Uh, instead of coming behind every time for handoffs, you spaced away a little bit, but that's kind of how we ran it. And we, we, we had some pretty good success. Again, if X4 or X5 helped up too much, 
Uh, we would throw the bounce there. Uh, we would throw the entry. Sometimes we would even go one, two, five, let the five drive baseline. We had some quick hitters and stuff, but it can be done. And again, your rules are essentially the same as your dribble drive. And maybe this is just a special lineup that you put in uh, late in games to, to eat up 15 seconds uh, to give your guards more room to escape uh, and then, uh, you know, get back into your four out, five out you know, where you space them back to the corners. Maybe you've got two bad ball handlers and late in the game, you don't want two players necessarily handling the ball up top to kill a game to win it for you. And that's another way to kind of eliminate that and play the same rules. So if you want to go to the next one there, I think what I've got there is just a couple little specials out of the five out or three out, two in uh, that I think might help you. If you're thinking about, gosh, you know, I got two bigs and, and I'm in a shot clock state and, and maybe 20, even if you're lucky enough to have a short shot clock, but here's one that we would run out of that alignment. It was very basic. Um, something I shared with Mark when he was dealing with the big five uh, or six foot 10 kid to just flare that player uh, or have that player at least have their man be the flare screener. And this one, it just goes one to two with a, with a corner cut. The two attacks the middle like normal weave. And then we flare the backside and you see this a lot. Uh, we're, we're guys that are, you know, seniors in college, juniors in college have uh, can kind of make that read, but we had a special call and it's one that um, it's that you see all over Oregon. Now quite a few teams borrowed that from us in the uh, late, late 2008, 2009. And I still see, I'll, I'll go recruit at a game and I'll still see a little, we used to call it five up. I'll, uh, I'll see five up quite a bit still great action to get yourself a late clock three. And again, versus over aggressive guys, you might get the slip. Then the next slide, a very another another little quick hitter to share, you know, kind of gives you a taste of what Mark and I did in the big course and, and times that by a hundred. Um, but here it's it's out of your dribble weave, and we always ran this set against aggressive late clock late game pressure on on our point guard. If we felt like you might be a little bit better athlete than us, this this was a way we got it out of our point guard's hands with a little flip. And two came back and flipped it again to three. And then from there, we would go back door on your one man. Um, got that a lot. Late clock, late game, ATO. Uh, tried to identify a kid who just subbed in. If you're not picking on subs, then you might want to write that down. Um, we always love to take advantage of the player that just came in the game with a quick little back door or a quick little isolation, especially if we know that they're not one of their stronger defenders. But this is another good one. Dribble weave, dribble weave, back door, four lifts hard, five sprints across. So it's another another one we've run. Uh, is that you? Okay. So you good. Um, let's go. Okay. So quick hitters here. All right. So um, so take what you do. Um, if you have wave in already. Uh, so this is traditional point two wings, two corners. Go Kurt, just running it, running it. This yep. so you want to just throw the ball and then create the double gap. There's a huge gap for your player, and now you're flowing and playing basketball. Let's go turtle turtle speeds because that was real quick. Okay, so we have that one. Um. Okay, so here is the fan series. And I want to talk to you about this a little bit. So this is just an action here. So we're going to go slot to slot, and they went fan. So that's two going along the baseline and everybody adjusting. What I do like about this action is if they kick here, it's different than traditional, and they picked this up from Doug Novak. You penetrate, you pitch, you post. So four should already be in that block showing numbers posting up. And when one drives, they read the action. So let's say four is in that low block, and they drive baseline. Four would escape out this way. Okay. And this is what it would look like if you were running traditional four out. This is a cut that I've really starting to use a lot uh, four out as well. So 
Here's what it looks like in a four out setting. Now, obviously, we're wanting four to get downhill. And then there it is, escaping out. Now, three is going to read this action, and they're going to be anywhere in this area playing off of that, off of that drive. Okay. Um, here is the fingers cut in action. Let's see if we'll bring up. So if we go slot to slot, if you could see now, instead of your five being in the dunker spot, they're in the, they're in the stretch. So four has this huge gap putting X2 on an island. Okay. Now if, leave that. So this is where I'm gonna go over it real quick. If four threw to here in the five out, one still cutting, four would go here. So now when they drive, if X4 came across, we'd probably have a kick, maybe a cheat drive, and we're playing. Okay. A um, couple of five outs that I like here. I mean, out of out of the slot slot. So this is kind of wavish action. Um, you can turn this into wave, or you can play. Maybe this is. A big for you right here, and you want to get into dribble handoff game. So one's going to be cutting. And then we got the huge gap. Um, so that's out of the two slots. Um, or here's one. Here's one out of kind of two slots, a stretch, and a thing. You, you have a shooter in the corner. You've got a two-man you want to get the ball to. Got to get five to the top of the key, and five is going to be your player. So now we're going to screen for four, get into a dribble handoff, and then set the elevator screen for two to come off for a three-pointer. So that's probably an ATO during a free throw situation. Um, here's some of that more of that stuff where you could you can. Instead of this player being here, you could have five come up top and still run this action. It does not have to be out of transition like, like I like to do it. Like the four out into five out, you can run this this way. So let's go. What one was that? Shoot. Good zoom. Okay. So you got, you brought, came up the left side of the floor, reversed it. Now you're going to do a drib now you're going to do a screen down into a handoff and have roll and replace action on that and you got your 1 and 3 spaced. Um, um if you're traditional uh point two wings and you want to get maybe a middle spread ball screen out of a five out look, or even bring your post up out and get into a five out. An action I really like to do here is send your four through and create that bigger gap. Instead of it, instead of coming off a ball screen on the two side, now you're coming off a ball screen on the one side, and the two side is where it was just set. And if you can shoot, pop them. If you can't, and now you're into five out principles. Okay. Uh, one more for you guys on these. Um, uh, this is a slot, slot, stretch, corner, corner action where you're going to do like almost a dribble. This is going to be a ghost, and you're going to do a dribble at. That could be a backdoor opportunity, but you're really trying to take, trying to get a pin down here and get throwback action here for a shot. Okay. Um, I think this might have been Kurt's play. 
or is this off of a ball screen? Okay, this is using this is kind of Kurt's idea in the five out point two two wings, two corners. You just have your point guard go follow it, and you run a ball screen, flare screen on one side, and down action on the other side. And you got an open middle. And what you want to do with four there is probably roll them. Five's your decision whether you want to pop them or, or send them to the short corner area. So those are some, some actions there that, that I've liked over the years. And let me see if I can bring up some five-out modern clips that I ran from last season for you real quick. Let's see. I don't know which ones are they. Yep. We seeing this? Yep. All right. Let me mute the volume here. All right. So this was last season. As you could see, we're in two slots, a stretch on the right side, and two corners. Uh, Kurt mentioned the seven footer that we had to play against. That's him right there, standing in the key. Okay. Uh, this kid's my post player. And so we put him out on the perimeter. So we just did a through cut, got some movement. And we kind of told him in this situation, he can screen the other person's man because there's not going to be any help. So we tried to do that here. It did not create a shot. Okay. But he's out on the perimeter. Because that guy does not leave the paint. And he just says, shoot it. Yeah, there he, there's him throwing down a dunk. Okay. So two slots, a stretch. Okay. Did not do what he's supposed to do. He did not cut. But this guy rips it baseline. And we go another baseline drive, kind of like what we were talking about, mix it up 50-50. He decided to drive. We go drift. Post is in the paint. One more. That's supposed to be the rotational defender. And we get a wide open. I know. So our rule, honestly, when it goes corner, a lot of times is you either shoot it or you pass it up. We don't like to drive from the corner, from the baseline corners. Kurt, do you have that rule? Yeah, I, I think essentially is is we're trying to get a corner three, and if we can't get a corner three, you're gonna you're gonna throw it up one more. Up over. Uh, obviously, there's exceptions. Some things happen weird. You get a really bad closeout. Um, maybe that one more is is empty because somebody was late getting there, and you might have to put it on the bounce, but. When we drive from corners in any of our alignments, it's typically off something like corner ball screen or a purposeful corner ISO to get away any traffic and really create a, a middle drive that's almost impossible to stop. But typically, if you've got guy in the one more slot, you want to move it, maybe even move it again if you don't have the three and then and get into a downhill drive from there. My, my philosophy, and you know this, Mark, is – is from Vance's attack, attack, swing, attack, attack. I'm always been SSA, swing, <laughs> swing, attack. I like to have. And two I mean passes. that's yeah. Two passes that's attack where, downhill. If you is drive that where down, your yeah. is that where your wave originated from? Uh, a little bit, you know. And when you when you you know the, the the NBA guys constantly talk about don't drive a drive. I always kind of be the contrarian a little bit. I said sometimes we drive a drive, yeah. sometimes we do. And a lot of times the, 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 the original drive wasn't a, um, a deep drive. Maybe it's just something we come down and initiate the offense. So I don't really count that as driving a drive. I, I think that's more of initiate. Now we drive, now we, we move it, we move it again, and then we get a better drive. Cause by then if you've swung, swung attack, I think at minimum you're on the second side. And if you can get a deep paint touch, you could probably get a pretty darn good shot on the third side. 
And at that point we want to shoot else or else we might throw it in the bleachers. So we're going to, we're going to let it rip at that point. Okay. We didn't get to the corner. We kicked it ahead. We kicked it again. We're kind of not spaced well here. So we square the top. That's a term where if we're lost, he bounced it. We get slot, slot. And now he went back the same way. Because we kind of said whoever our post was being guarded by, you can always go dribble handoff to him if you're in trouble because the guy's going to be in the paint. There's not going to be any anything to worry about. So he throws it back. Kind of in the wing. He saw the player in the corner. So he did not cut opposite. He is drifting slot to slot like I talked about earlier. And again, hits, hits a wide open three. Did a really good job on that position, condensing the defense. There were two or three times that the defense had three or four guys in the paint. So this is just uh, just showing – I wanted to show this for people that are maybe not fully bought into dribble drive and why it's, I like it. Okay. And our rules on transition is for the most part, be, be your own outlet. If you're not a post. So our normal point guard didn't get the ball. We advanced the ball up corner player did not attack the baseline. I do not like driving the three side baseline because it puts them in a left-hand pass. That is, I mean, if I have a left-hander, maybe that's okay, but a high school kid driving baseline here and trying to hit someone in that opposite corner with their left hand is, is tough. Okay, so this player's driving straight at the end. So there it is. There, there's my point. The defense could have deflected. How did the player throw this drift pass with his right hand? He threw it like, like that. Okay, and here's our rule. So we have the two-on-one on, on the weak side because the post is not going to come out again. Okay. So we're, we are corner. He either shoots one more. So look who – look. the post kid was the closest to it, and someone clear from the other side is the one who came. Okay. Now, in this game, we hit 13 threes. And lost by 25 points. I think we're the only team in history that can make 13 threes in a game and lose by 25 points. But um, it's pretty hard to do. I'm in that club. So raise your hand if you're, if you're in that club. So, um, But those were some clips I wanted to share with you guys today. And if you guys got questions, drop them in the comments. Um, that's kind of any more things to run for three out, two in. Yeah, we do. We have quite a bit. Um, we just showed you a teaser a little bit today um, in the in the dribble drive A to Z course. Um, not sure who Facebook user is. Let me see if I can figure it out. Uh, Chad Wadden. OK, um, not positive, Chad, you're in the course or not. Um, but the the course like today, we went over adjustments. We didn't give you, we have ball screen packages, uh, Princeton drive stuff that maybe you heard me speak with coach Wheeler about. I, I did a Princeton section inside of the course where Kurt likes chin action out of it and has some chin, chin stuff. And I like to run the point series out of it and flow it into dribble drive. That's all in the course. Um, so, um, I'm going to just bring this up real quick for people that may be interested and, and just briefly go over before we, if there's no more questions out there, Kurt, do you see any? I do not. Okay. So I'm going to bring share. It's going to bring up this real quick for you guys. We went over it yesterday. If you joined us, if this is your first day with us, we've presented for three days for you. First day, we presented on wide dribble drive. Second day, can you run it versus zone? And today, we gave you adjustments to be able to make in case you can't fully run it. That's just a tip of the iceberg of what me and Kurt have put together. So let me go. Um, put it in present here so it's easier to see. 
Okay. So, is it going to present? Present. <laughs> All right, there it goes. All right, now it should be full screen. So we put together an A to Z course where it was a six-week thing where people came live, and we and we conducted this live, and we made it evergreen, so it's it's available for coaches. It was uh, two two sessions a week for six weeks, and we ended up doing thirteen chapters. The thirteen chapter was a film review for the people that did it live with us, but we took you from A to Z. Uh, it's called the Dribble Drive Motion A to Z course, and first chapter was how to implement. So we, we discussed how you would teach it. I mean, if you're a youth level coach, what, or a high school coach, college coach, you should be, you should be able to take something from that and be able to go implement the dribble drive. The second day we talked about pure, how you would set up your practices, practice planning, gave you outlines, gave you practice suggestions and, and then the third day we went over the drills that we use. Uh, we went over, Vance's traditional drills, but also we went over how we twist them and how we've made them better for ourselves and our programs and the little things that we've learned over doing this for 14, 15 years of running this style of play, the tweaks that you need to make. That now, if you are understanding dribble drive, know it, but you have those situations where shoot, we're having trouble versus pressure. We're having trouble versus pack. Oh, they switch us. Oh, they play zone defense. Oh, they play box and one. Oh, they play triangle and two. Oh, they play zone. Well, we went over all the options of ideas and some of our, all of our best stuff that we could come up with to show you ways to handle those situations. In the advanced dribble drive or in the, in the variations, we went over three out, two in. We went over five out. We went over what do you do if I'm hiding somebody? Where do you put them? Uh, we went over Princeton actions into it, Horns actions into it. Anything else on variations? I mean, we <laughs> no, I get it. We, we always go with alignments and then actions. That's always the two. The the, the the double A is something I think everybody should have in there, whatever they're doing. You know, alignment and action. And then in the advanced chapter, we went into more in-depth stuff, ways to run it, ideas for, for more double gaps, triple gaps. Um, chapter 10, if you have that post player, uh, how to use them on the block and the Razor series and some of the stuff we teased today, with or not teased, but showed you today. Um, Chapter 11 was special situations. That's triangle and two, box and one, sideline OBs, baseline OBs, face guarding your players out of the corner. Uh, what, what do you do in those situations? And then chapter 12 is bringing it all together. What do you do in the off season or even in season to develop the players to run this mindset? Um, since, since I started the course, or me and Kurt, we did the three-day challenge in October, and so the recordings and the diagrams from that are inside the A to Z course as well. So everybody that had already purchased that got that added on. So what we're offering with this presentation of the three-day boot camp that we did is we're offering the course, and if you go on systembasketball.com and just – clicked on dribble drive motion A to Z course that sells for the 12 videos just by itself for $99. That's over. That's 22 hours of footage of diagrams, talking some game footage, some clips and hearing Kurt and I present the whole course. That, that itself is, is if you bought each individual chapter right now, they're anywhere from 15 to $20 on, on the site. So if you add that up, say they were all 20 times 12, that's $240. And we offer that in the course if you bought all of it together for 99. So what we're throwing in for bonuses, if you take care, take advantage of this, is the A to Z course book. So like the slides and the diagrams that you saw over the past three days, you'll get all of those that we used for the course when we were presenting and that came out to 540 pages. Um, 
I put in a high school ebook that you could give to your lower levels, your junior high, that goes over the basics of the dribble drive in, in fast draw diagram PDF form that you could just hand it to them and say, hey, this is this is what we're doing. It kind of walks them through it, gives them some drills, gives you some sets, gives you some zone entries, and you'll have a great uh, youth to freshman JV package. Um, if you liked what I talked about, five out DM today, I went more over in a in a dribble drive clinic I did prior to the season last year. Um, point two wings, two corners, how to run uh, dribble drive and 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 the layers I teach, how I got into it out of out of transition, missed shots, quick hitters. It's about a two hour clinic. Um, the fourth bonus, quick hitters, is some of my favorite quick hitters that I use, and then quick hitters of Nate Oates, uh, Mike Neighbors, Mike McGuff, uh, some of the top college coaches that run dribble drive. We're also going to, since I said that these replays will be coming down, we're going to be putting, we're going to be sending you a bonus of the replays and the diagrams that we use for this one. And we also started a private Facebook group. So if you're in the dribble drive motion hoop talk group, you, you don't see everything that the A to Z group sees. Um, I do like stuff at practice where I do like uh, drills or a new drill that I put in or something new that I really, really, really like that kind of goes to the A to Z family members. So that's, that's the spiel for the bonuses. So what's the question is, what does all this cost? Well, the cost is the same price as if you bought it individually just for the course. So you're going to get, Oops, it went backwards. There it is. So you're looking at 22 plus hours, X's and O's, all the playbooks, all the diagrams, the private Facebook group, and the bonus videos for $99. So again, like I told you, if you went on systembasketball.com and clicked on the dribble drive motion A to Z course, you'll find it for $99. Right now, we have this specially bundled for you through Sunday evening. And let me recap for you everything that you get. You're going to get the course. 22 hours, all, all, all 13 chapters, plus the dribble drive motion, uh, three-day challenge videos that me and Kurt, Kurt did. So that's additional value there. So that's value at $199, the course book. $69 value. If you bought that separately, if you bought all this stuff separately, it would come out to $355. And today through Sunday, we're offering it for $99. So I'm going to put the bootcamp bundle link in here if anyone's interested in it and want to take advantage of that. Put it in the Facebook group. There we go. And just to show you real quick again. Stop screen. All right. Window. Chrome tab. All right. Here it is on on the screen boot camp bundle or you can go to systembasketball.com and it's on the front page as well again it's 99 here's i value our book at 69 but we only sell it for 39 by itself 99 dollars for the course there's the ebook for 15 there's the five out for 20 there's the quick hitters so you add all that up and you're getting a pretty good value for your money. And like Kurt said the, the other day, it is comprehensive. It is A to Z. It is not just, um, it is, here we go. Boom, course. Where's the course? Boom, boom, boom. There we go. So if this is the main page for it, so it takes you down here, all the table of contents down here. 
So there's all the chapters of the videos. There's the three day challenge bonus. And here's some of the notes and outlines and, and practice planning that are in there. So again, there's a, there's opportunity for you guys that are interested in dribble drive, run it for your program, interested in putting it in. It's a comprehensive package for you. So Kurt, you want to add anything? No, I don't know if that slide came up on my end. Um, I'm just seeing the boot camp bumble right now still, but um, okay. yeah, it, 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 truly comprehensive. You've got, you've got drills to build it. You, you've got the, the, what to do if question you've got uh, specials situations, meaning, you know, late game ATOs, you, you know, we finish up with, um, you know, I think some of the ending chapters, if I remember correctly, or again, we've got some film session, but if, if you, we look at adjustments. We look at deep dive into adjustments. Today was just scratching the surface. You know, I know there was a couple of questions about more things to run. Well, in in the chapter there on adjustments, I believe we have multiple looks from from five out, multiple looks from three out, two in, and some stuff that can you can you can use um, uh, when you make those adjustments. Okay. Screen. All righty. So we want to thank you guys for joining us on the three day uh, dribble drive motion community, hoop talk community. Uh, the A to Z course members are ready. Um, we, we really enjoy uh, bringing dribble drive to us. We're fat. We're passionate about it. And we're always looking for new innovative ideas and looking to bring those to uh, especially the, the course members. Um, the hoop talk group, we, we, we answer questions in there. It's a it's a community of three thousand coaches. If you're not in or close to three thousand now, if you're not in that community, um, I would I would I would take a peek at it. You can find that at Dribble Drive Motion Hoop Talk on Facebook. So, um, with that being said, I don't see any more questions for today from you guys. Um, have a happy holiday, good Christmas, good New Year, um, good luck uh, to you rest of your season. If we can be of help to you, uh, drop us a message. And thanks again, Kurt. Yeah, good luck to everybody and the, as they move along. And hopefully, you said you, you got a peek at what what Dribble Drive does for you, can do for you, maybe maybe um, what it could do for you uh, down the road. All right, everybody, take care and stay safe. Good luck, coaches.